Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sunset Stitches here in sunny Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. It's Free Font Friday, and today we're going to be talking about puffy foam and how to choose the best fonts to work with puffy foam. And I've got a bunch of tips and tricks with puffy foam, and I've made a bunch of different samples and you know tried some different designs with the cool puffy foam. And so we're going to learn about different types of puffy foam, different uh, sizes of puffy foam, different colors of puffy foam. Um, so I have all kinds of, I guess what we're going to say, tips for choosing puffy foam fonts, you guys. And so, um, yeah, what we'll learn about in today's video is um, puffy foam tips and tricks. So first one would be choosing fonts with tapered ends. Uh, because if the ends taper, then it'll easily cut the foam out. But if they have more open and blunt ends, I'll show you all about capping. And um, I'll show you an easy way to add capping to really any embroidery design. Um, we'll also learn about density and how important it is to almost double or more than double your normal density. And um, we'll talk about holes and spaces and the importance of leaving room for the foam to uh, get it out, so to speak. And um, we'll talk about the different kinds of foam, the different sizes of foam, different qualities or densities of foam. And so it's a really great video today. If you're into puffy foam, you're going to love it. So uh, sit right back and get ready for a lot of fun. Uh, but before we do, you guys, I wanted to um, talk about the free font of the week you guys because every week here at sunset stitches we do another font now if you're watching this video later this may not be the font of the week but just know there will be a free font that week and if you join for any of my classes like trevor and friends embroidery club or if you join for the uh, my ftc workshop I, number four you know my recent classes then you'll be able to get to the font archive and get all of the fonts because We've done a whole bunch of really cool ones, you guys. And I want to say thank you and give a shout out to Nicholas here in the studio today, helping me with the live stream. Um, thanks, Nick. He also digitized most of these fonts. I guess a couple of them I did. But um, yeah, anyway, you guys come and collect our fonts. They're free. Every week you can get a new one. Um, what I wanted to show you guys, let me just get my... Um, can you put my screen on again, Nick? Just the mid-sizers would fine. But the American All-Stars is the font of the week. Um, this is kind of, it's an all-caps font, right? So there's no kind of lowercase letters. It's really nice and sort of tall and sort of italic a little bit. And it's good for about two inches. Probably easy to go beyond two inches, but you might need to... Um, add some split satins, you know, or deal with the long stitches is what's going to happen. This is what it looks like at two inches tall. So yeah, you get the idea. Um, it's a great new font from Sunset Stitches, but I wanted to remember to tell everybody about the retreat. We're having a retreat in March, you guys. It's for the members of FTCU workshop number one. Um, I just want to say if you have any of these DVDs that are really these were all memberships to classes that you may have collected. Um, the good news is we have a brand new website uh, starting, you know, just this last couple of years. And if you ever bought any of these, you can get them uh, activated on our new website. What you need to do is actually join. Um, what I can do is open up the web browser and just show you guys. This is our Sunset Stitches website. And if you click to enter, maybe show this full screen, Nick, so that it's easy for them to see. the um, Right here where it says account. Yeah, view all membership options. And uh, go ahead and get the free account, you know, and then send me an email to trevor at sunsetstitches.com. And let me uh, help you add. So if you bought in the past any of these DVDs, like Workshop 1, 2, or 3, notice under the Floriani Workshop, all of my workshops are here. 
and there's a member download page for every workshop. And um, we would love to have you get them on our website. There's no cost if you already bought it, just need to sign up for a free account. So I wanted to remind everybody and the member retreat, you guys, there's a member retreat happening in 2024. So if you bought workshop one many, many years ago, there's five new classes coming and don't sweat it. If you're like, what? I didn't even know this is, it's already happened. Um, you can come and get the recordings. It's like all of my classes, they'll be available in the member download page. Okay, so that's it, Nick. I'm done with my news and whatnot. So uh, have I got any of my friends with me live today yeah, in the Bertie. house? Hey, Bertie, how's it going? Um, I keep popping up. Well, you know, I didn't set a set time today because I'll be honest, I was stitching puffy foam samples right up, you know, just trying to get a few extra ones done, trying different colors of foam and seeing what kind of results I could get. So if you guys have any questions about sewing on puff foam, then you're welcome to ask them. Um, if it's after the live is over, go ahead and ask them anyways, and we'll check back in. And if you just want to say hi, go ahead and say, hey, Trevor, it's, um, you know, I'm tuning in from, where are you coming from? Okay, so let's go ahead, Nick, get uh, bring up my um, screen again, and this time um, I'm going to show some a uh, couple of things actually. But I'm going to. Uh... So first of all, let me just kind of recap this part. Um, the fonts. If you choose a font that has a tapered end, and what I mean by that is the end of the letter here, you know. And notice that I chose ones that kind of have. See the bottom of the P right here. That's what I would call an open end. So this font isn't really as tapered as it looks. But this one up here has kind of like a small taper to the end of it. And the more open the end is, the harder it is for the nothing really cuts the foam. That's the bottom line is you need needle penetrations to cut the foam out. And so if you can find fonts that have tapered ends, and I'll show you guys a couple, we're going to um, look at the Floriani software. But one of the questions that I got asked was, it, this whole thing started from a question on Facebook. It was, um, was would the font number six, you know, from our website, Memory Gummy, if you come back up and you click on embroidery fonts, when we released the font, uh, Memory Gummy, the question was, would this be a good font to sew on puff foam? And um, if you look at it, it does have a nice um, tapered end to pretty much every letter. And so it does do a pretty good job cutting up the foam. And it's a nice bold font. So it also kind of left room to capture lots of the foam and be really tall. So it has a lot of promise, you know, let's see how the samples turn out. Um, the other one that I looked at in, in our fonts was the uh, ball bound, because the ball bound was the one that had uh, for almost every letter, kind of a really nice rounded end to it. So I guess, is that not a picture? Oh yeah, just really slow. But you'll see how they go. So, um, but you know, if you own the Floriani software, there are fonts that are made for puff foam. And so this is the Floriani software and this is the ball bound. So this is what I'm saying. If you look at um, the ends of the letter V, how, and I'll just turn off the 3D and maybe even turn on the needle points. See how the needle points do a really nice job of cutting out the, fo the foam in this font. So that is your first tip, right? For today was picking fonts that have a tapered end. Um, that said, the next tip was capping. You know, if you don't have tapered ends, you need to understand about capping. Well, go back into the software. These letters don't have capping. You know, if there's no capping at the end, if you didn't, if 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 this wasn't enough, if there weren't enough needle points to cut the foam, you might want to add some. And that would be really easy to do with what we call stitch editing. Um, so what you would do is you would perfect your text to the point where you were, you know, ready to sew it. And then you could go in and add those extra stitches yourself. And it's kind of a manual process, but literally, um, but the reason I say set the text how you like it first is the thing with stitch edits is you kind of 
um, you lose the ability to work in shapes because if you, you know, change the text, you might lose your stitch edit. So it kind of goes both ways. So the point is set your text exactly how you like it. Then when you make your stitch edits, um, you don't need to worry about losing them because you won't be changing the text anymore. You're kind of done that part. So when you get to this area here, um, if you want to add some capping, you could do, this is a tool right here called the stitch tool. And I can use it to select any stitch of my design. See how they kind of highlight when I go over them? And so if that's the underlay, you know, clearly you can see it walk down the center and then it did a parallel underlay. And that's because it's probably going to zigzag down and it looks like it finishes this letter right here before it jumps to the O. So where we want to add that extra stitching is kind of right after that stitch, before that stitch. Can you kind of visualize what I mean? And so I selected that stitch and I can right click and say insert after. And now I can kind of go and what I'll do is what I really need is some stitches along here. But a lot of times what we'll do is we'll make them go back and forth. So, you know, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong, but if I go a small one and then another one right beside that one, but then a longer one and then another one right beside that one, but then a small one again. And then this here, I'm making a row. You know, that's the point. I want to make a row. But I don't want to make a bunch of really tiny stitches either. So what I did was I made them longer. And I kept putting them along to make sure that that part of the foam got cut out. But I did a varied stitch on this end because I can't. And um, that's called capping. You know, I just added them manually, right? Just little extra stitching in there, no big deal. Um, but that said, if you go to choose fonts, you know, if you're like, start, if you own the Floriani software, there are some fonts that have capping built in. Uh, you'll know when you're in your properties box over here on the right, um, there's a drop down menu. And if I scroll down to the P for puff foam, and you'll notice that the puff foam fonts have a PF. It's like PF 3D block. So that's like a two color one. Uh, that's a cool one. So it's got puff foam and then borders around the outside. Um, and so you can kind of get the idea here. Let's turn off the needle points and maybe turn back on the 3D. So that's kind of a cool one, but it's been designed to work with puff foam and when you kind of zoom in really closely and you get to areas like here where you've got a, a kind of a large cap you can notice the um the capping on the blunt end of that because the idea with this one is you sew the first color on the puff foam and you pull the foam off and then you sew the border and so the border comes kind of after the foam and that one looks really good. There's another one that's designed for, well, actually there's two or three more that are designed for puff foam. And um, so just as an example, this one's just plain block font. Um, and when you use the block font, so let's make it say Trevor and click apply, you'll notice that each, oh, and it's an all cap font. So you better type it in all caps, Trevor. I can tell that by looking here because there's no lowercase letters. So I just didn't look. Um, but there, so it's an all cap letter. So make sure you don't forget to use all caps with that font. And um, notice that every blunt end already has this built in kind of capping stitching going on. And so um, that was one of the most important tips really was tip the tip for capping and also for you know choosing font. Here's the thing it's easy to pick a font that doesn't need capping. And then you can really just focus in on the next um, tip, which is density. And um, I like to use 0.15, you know, for my tests, uh, 0.2 um, would be fine, but really you need to add a lot of density. And here's the reason why. Um, you see, normally your density is, the thread is kind of going from here to there, the distance, you know, if you measure across. But imagine now that this is three-dimensional and the thread has to go up the side, the, de the height of the puff foam before it can go across and then down the height of the puff foam. And so it uses quite a bit of thread. And really one of the, the big complaints about the puff foam is 
that you see it, right? You, you might see some of it, especially little bits of it. So, and so I have great tips for that. We're getting to that, okay? I'm getting to the tips. But the, the density tip here is um, select your text, come to your properties area, and where, you know, no matter what software you use, increase your density to 1.5 or not, sorry, well, not 1.5, 0.15 or 0 0.2. 1.5 will be very open density and it won't look good at all. 0.15 is what you want. And so it's quite a, um, a very um, tight stitch. When you look at the distance between them, it's literally 0.15 apart. And so if I turn off 3D and I turn on those needle points again, you'll see how close they are together. And so that is why it does such a good job of cutting out the foam. Um, I'm going to show you guys pictures of sewing these ones out now. Um, but I wanted to talk about holes and spaces because I really felt that that was the problem with the memory gummy. You know, when we did the, when we used the font memory gummy. So these are ones that were built in and you can go ahead and check them out if you own the program. But there's like, you know, another one that's got a shadow on it and another one that's got, um, I think that's kind of it. But if I go back to the one that we created here, that was the beginning, you know, somebody asked, would memory gummy be good for doing on um, puff foam? Well, okay. Step number one, uh, create your text. Um, we'll make it say, and this one can be upper and lower because I don't have any restrictions on that. It's got both upper and lower. And <clears throat> you could add your density, right? So it's normally 0.4. Well, I'm saying 0.15 and click apply and you'll see right away how much more that is. You know, and let me just zoom in and let me just undo. That was regular embroidery density. That's density per, per puff foam. So a lot more, okay? And um, notice that how well it, without any extra help, how many how well it's really got a lot of stitches. I didn't have any trouble and didn't need capping. So yes, but where I ran into problems was places like where the V and the O were together. I needed to go into where it says spacing and make it be like two or three to purposely push the letters apart to have space in between them. And you might even need to right click and use the edit settings and um, manually adjust them to make sure that there was, and that was, I think, one of my flaws and my tests was I didn't make enough. And at the end of the day, no matter, you can kind of correct all of that, but the one thing with this font that is going to always be a challenge is some of the letters have quite small insides. And it, while it did work, it makes it a lot harder to get the foam out when there's a very small space. So the tip that I was giving was pay attention to holes and spaces. And if you can, make room for the puff foam. So one last thing to learn about, and that is that foam, puff foam comes in all kinds of different sizes, comes in all different colors. And so if you bring me back on full screen here, Nick, um, just you know, check out these two pieces of white foam and how one of them is what you would call a two millimeter foam and how one of them is what you would call a six millimeter foam. Um, this one here is what you call a three millimeter foam. And these are from all different companies and they have all different quality uh, density settings. Does that make I think the real key word here is density because the best foams are going to be very sort of stiff feeling have a real snap to them. And when they tear, they're going to have, they're going to tear nice and clean, you know, so there'll be less bits. Bottom line is if you get better foam, you'll get less bits. The good news is no matter what foam you use, you can get rid of the bits. And there are some ticks on get, tips on getting rid of the bits. Um, so let's go to this one now, Nick, and then I'll show my photos. So I stitched out memory gummy. And so I, um, I just used felt to stitch them out on top of, and um, you can see that I started out with the two millimeter foam. So that's the thin white stuff. And one of the things I really wanted to learn from today was uh, what fonts would work good. And I also wanted to learn about the colors. What I, did it matter if I used, if I was doing red embroidery, did it matter? Red foam or white foam or black foam, you know, did it matter? 
Um, so I stitched on white and I sewed the word uh, memory and tore off the two millimeter foam and got rid of the little bits. And can you see the little bits I'm talking about? See the little white bits? Yeah, I can totally get rid of all of those bits with just a little bit of extra effort um, by poking them. And it's really quite astounding. I got Nicholas to make a little video of it. So maybe we'll figure out a way to post that on in the comments or something with the bit, you know, with today's recording. But the uh, we should have loaded it. We'll have to learn to do that. I can load those in and you can play them, right? I forgot that. I made videos and I could have, I didn't, I'm, I'll learn. But um, what I'm saying is my favorite tip to get rid of the little white bits is literally to take with a pair of tweezers and kind of poke into your um, embroidery a little bit like that. And it kind of makes them go away. Um, I know some people will say they shrink with heat and I know they do, but I don't like putting heat to my garments. I try not to use, you know, paint strippers around embroidery on hats or jackets. So um, preferably get better foam. And um, if there are any, bit, first of all, if you can get red foam for red embroidery, yeah, that does work the best. Um, but then the question is, well, if you can't, is it better red on black or red on white? Or is it better red on gray? Because you can get other kind of neutral colors. Um, I found that both worked fine. I, it looked great on both because by the time I was done poking them, you couldn't see them. So the point is you just poke. You can also kind of squish with your finger. I don't know if you can get me doing that, Nick, but I'm like, I actually kind of squished the embroidery down with my finger while I was poking with the tweezers. And I got rid of all of them. So it worked out pretty well. Um, that's, this was before I did that because I haven't sewn, I did all my cleaning up after is what I'm saying. This is still during sewing. Um, so I took off the two millimeter foam when I taped down some of the thicker foam to see how would memory gummy turn. Memory gummy didn't do too bad with the two millimeter foam. Um, but when I put the memory gummy on the six millimeter foam, I did struggle to get it out of kind of the small spots. Um, but it didn't look too bad. Um, the one thing I will say about memory gummy was um, on the foam. So you can see that quite a bit more bits were happening with the larger foam than they were with the smaller foam. Um, but when I was done cleaning it up, it looked really nice. You know, and I don't, you, I don't see really any sort of evidence of the bits anymore. Um, so it didn't take too much work to kind of clean it all up is the point. You know, yeah. Um, what I didn't like about the memory gummy was um, the ends of the letters. And so I knew that the ball bound might be a better test. And so I stitched out the ball bound on the two millimeter and pulled the ball off and then did the bound on the six millimeter. So the same test. And um, so without the capping, the one thing I will say is that the, you know, the ends of the letters are, um, they kind of almost feel like a waterfall. Like they just go right to the end and they want, I think that's kind of the case with always with puff foam, even if you've got the capping in there. But I guess the bottom line is if you feel that you're doing a design and you feel that it needs a little capping in a couple spots, it's not that hard to add it. Um, but that's what it looks like with the two millimeter foam. And that's what it looks like with the six millimeter foam. And that is the white puff foam under the red stitching. So it's very very few remnants left that I can kind of detect. Um, and then I did the black. So I was just want, you know, curious, Trevor wanted to see what would it be like if I did the same test uh, using the black foam. Um, I actually found that the black foam was more noticeable than the white foam was. Um, that said, when I was done and I removed all of the foam and cleaned it up, I thought it looked just as good both ways. I could, I don't even know if you'd really notice which one was which. This is what I mean about the ends of this letter is it's just um, kind of, uh, they feel like with the, with the two millimeter, they're fine. It's with the six millimeters, pretty tall. You know, I guess that's what I'm saying is I find six millimeter, you really might still need the capping. Uh, but it was a pretty good, the three millimeter foam uh, with the red was an easy result, right? Because when I pulled that off, it didn't even show bits, right? I barely even had to consider them. Uh, I did, you know, work at it a little bit, just like I did the other ones to clean it up when I was done. 
Um, and I thought that all three, you know, really looked nice. So um, the three millimeter seemed like a nice size. I like the two. I like the three. I think the six millimeter is a bit extreme. If you're doing the Nike smoosh and you got really nice tapered tips, I think you're good. But with the blunt ends, I always feel like the, you know, they, they leave a bit of a challenge. And certainly that's where the capping comes in. Um, and so for capping, and I think I'd also stitched out the, um, these were some of the other ones that, you know, that the Floriana, this is an old stitch out, to be honest. I didn't do that one today. Um, but so these are my tips for you guys. Use lots of density. Um, and kind of coming back to the capping, like if you are going to use a font that mostly tapers, but you find that at the bottom, there is a small area. Then what you do is you use your stitch edit tool and you find that kind of last stitch of the underlay before it goes into the stitching and you right click and you say you insert stitches after and you could do them like one time look click 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 and it doesn't take hardly any effort to add in some custom capping right in that spot in your design you would never see that but it becomes part of the special underlay made for puffy foam so i don't know go ahead bring me back on camera again nick see what everybody says um, did you get any comments or questions for me today, Nicholas? That's the red, um, uh, puff foam. Puff foam's a lot of fun, you guys. It's a topper. You know, you put it on top of your embroidery, you peel it off. Um, this one has the white underneath it. You can kind of see a little bit of it right there. And I think it's because that's what I was saying that I felt like with the really tall one, that it kind of felt like it wanted to fall a little bit. So that's why it was showing is the last stitch, the last couple of stitches were just kind of like an avalanche going over the end. So I think if I had to add just that extra little capping there, that it would kind of give that sort of extra stitching underneath so that even when the avalanche came, there was still red stitching underneath, you know, and that's part of it. So yeah, um, I'm looking at- do, do, do you need to worry about um, bobbin thread? Good question, Kathy. Um, I don't know if you need to worry about bobbin thread unless you're going to see it. So typically with pop, with puffy foam, you're not meant to be seeing any bobbin thread. So no, um, unless it was like going on a bathrobe and you were going to do, you know, um, you didn't want it to be, you know, show on the inside. So you want it to look nice. So maybe it was black embroidery on a white bathrobe. Or, you know, that would be hard to sew. Red embroidery on a white bathrobe. And you could use red bobbin thread. That way, even when they took the robe off, it still looked. The, the letters might read backwards on the inside, but it doesn't mean they have to have a big white stripe down the inside. But honestly, if you're not going to see it, who cares, right? That's the main thing. So on maybe on a bathrobe or on the inside of a jacket or something like that. Successfully uploaded the video of you poking at the white bits on the... Oh. Nicholas says he can show a little video of me I poking them. Well. Really <laughs> oh, it, it might have some ideas. rap video in the back. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah. No and so see how many white bits there were there and how they're literally disappearing in that little area right there. See me kind of massage it on my finger. Look at that. Show that again because that was kind of fun. Um, so I'm just poking. And they're just slowly going back in. And then I just a little squish with my finger. Yeah. And and I clean those. The whole design cleans up and it, and it looks just like that. So puff foam, you guys. Double your density. Look for tapered ends. Uh, learn to add the capping. You know, realize that lots of Floriani fonts. Well, not lots, but there are a handful that have the capping in there. And, you know, put it on your wish list. Maybe we'll develop a magical tool to... You know the capping button. That that's something that Floriani really is famous for is adding a little bit of wow to the software. And I could see us doing that. You know, have, having that. Um, yeah. Hi, Ori. One of my favorite students is visiting today. So great to see you. Um, I'm looking forward to next week because next week is our workshop number four, um, class number fourteen hearts uh challenge and ori sent in this awesome um what is it ori that's like a and and hope is modeling it anyway it's a heart uh it's a bag um 
I forget already, for goodness sakes. I've got the photograph here. I'm excited to show it anyways, Ori. And she, um, she always participates in all the challenges that we do at Sunset Stitches. So I know that you'll want to be doing the new uh, retreat. I've never done a retreat before, by the way. So the retreat is a new idea. Um, but just know that this is the first retreat, March 19th, 20th, 26th, 27th, and then April 23rd. It's five classes. They're all going to be about two hours long, and they're all going to be on mastering the basics. You know, that's the, the theme for the retreat. Workshop number one, uh, members retreat, mastering the basics. And we're just going to go through, you know, when you use your text tool, do you know the best underlay to choose? You know, do you know how, when to add pull compensation and how much? And just do you understand the basics, you know, and are you ready to learn more? And so this will be a great brush up for anybody who's already a workshop member. Um, for and Workshop number one was by far our biggest workshop. But so many of the people that have the workshop number one DVD never joined my new website because back in those days, I sent everything by email. So if you got a whole bunch of designs, you know, you downloaded all the classes. Well, there's five new classes. How are you going to get them? Got to get on our website. So this is a call out to everybody to join the sunset. If, if, you, if you're a member of my workshop, number one, you know, or two or three, you know, or four is here somewhere too, or the sketch training or the fusion or workshop four or my embroidery clubs, right? All of these things are now online. And if you bought the DVD at a sewing store, we'll help you add it to the website for no cost, but please visit. And if you need help, just send an email to Trevor at Sunset Stitches. And that is basically how to do it. So yeah, it's going to be fun to have a retreat. Um, I'm planning more retreats. We're going to do uh, it, it. This one proves to be as fun as I hope it is. Then we're going to do a workshop number two retreat and a workshop number three retreat. And then finally, before the end of the year, I'll do a workshop number four retreat. So um, the concept of the retreats was that each one will have a focus theme and we will have a sort of concentrated series of classes about one theme uh, leading up to, of course, a challenge, because I always like to finish things off with a, now it's your turn, you know, and that, and that really is the theme with some, with all my workshop classes is for you to do it and try it. And then, of course, if you need help, that's why I'm here. So all that said, you guys, um, is memory gummy good for puffy foam? Eh, the two millimeter, yes. The three millimeter red on yet red, no problem. Um, but the six millimeter on white, some challenges, uh, ball bound much better. Any of the Floriani fonts that are set up to work on puff foam, uh, should be good. Um, uh, you know, there's probably more things I'll think of that I didn't say today, but I think I gave the main tips. Oh, I'm going to put this on our website so that you can get like a little printed PDF page to add to your notes. So, um, can you take me on screen again, Nick? And I will take you back one more time to the Sunset Stitches website. So when you're on the Sunset Stitches website, I'm just going to click on the word Sunset Stitches to go to the home page. And if you want to download the new free font, you click on embroidery fonts. Okay. If you need to make an account, you click on account and you can say view all. Or if you've already got an account, then you can log in. Um, embroidery recipe box is where you'll find... Uh, things like today. So notice that it says puffy foam tips for choosing fonts, video and PDF in the works. Check back soon. That's how you get it. Last week, we did a video about learning how uh, to, I guess, understand the density of a design. How dense is your design? And oh boy, a whole year ago, we did learning to lace, make lace snowflakes, but Nick and I are on a roll and things are really getting kind of fun around here at Sunset Stitches. So thank you so much. I see quite a few people have come and logged in live with us today. It's great to see you guys. Um, shout out to some of my friends uh, like Robin and Charlene. It was great to see you guys today. Um, does puff foam shrink from thread when washing the garment? The puff foam does not shrink. It will shrink with heat, but not the kind of heat that your dryer is going to put on it. Uh, that's only with my limited experience. And I will say that, you guys, 
Um, it's been a long time since I spent my days walking back and forth in front of a 12 head embroidery machine. And so um, things may have changed a little bit, but um, you know, puff foam is not new. I learned about it when I was in my twenties. And so I don't believe there's any laundering considerations with puff foam. I've never heard that or seen that, but like I said, I'm not like in the know these days. So <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Anyway, Marilyn, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for coming to visit today. I hope that everybody that watches the video and the recording is also happy. Go ahead and leave a comment. We are always happy to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to us. Trevor at sunsetstitches.com. Uh, for now, I think I'm going to say uh, thanks for coming. Don't forget about the free font of the week, which is American All-Star. And so if you're here with us live, you can now download American All-Star. Come back later and I'll have a PDF for tips and tricks with puffy foam um, and a link to rewatch the video. And if you have any of these DVDs, please sign up on our new website because we don't want to leave anybody behind. And so thank you very much for your time today. Until I get to meet you in person. Bye for now.